Hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com here and uh, I'm so glad to see you if you've joined us from part one of the video on the relationship between the F and the chi-square distribution. In this video we're going to be looking at question two. Consider the independent variables xi for i1 to 4 where each of these xi's are not standard normal but normal with a mean of 0 and a variance of 4. Solve for k this probability that x2 squared plus x3 squared plus x4 squared is bigger than 19x1 squared plus 20x3 squared is equal to k. Now, kind of standard problems of this type that we've seen is probability that a random variable is bigger than or less than a number is equal to k. So y is the random variable, a is a number, k is a probability. Depending, now anything that looks like this we know how to solve because if we're just given one of a or k and we have to find the other one. So in this case since we have to find k we'll know what value of a is. To do that we need the distribution of y. Say so y follows a symmetric distribution such as a normal or t then the picture will look something like this, symmetrical distribution, a is given and k which we look up is here and it's to the shade region to the right of a because it, we're looking at greater than. If y is a um, positively skewed distribution such as a chi-square f distribution it's going to look like this so a this time is long here and probability k is looks like this area to the right again Obviously, what the precise point of A along here, sorry, the uh, preci yes, precise point of A along here would depend on the value of A, which we don't know just by looking at this question. Okay. Well, even before we can find a distribution of Y, we notice this look that this isn't question isn't of the form random variable on the left hand side of the inequality and the value a number on the right hand side because we've got random variables on the left and right. So this means that we have to do two things. First we have to rearrange this inequality so we have the random variable on the left hand side and a number on the right hand side. And then we have to figure out the distribution of that random variable and appeal to the relevant table. So step one then, figure it, uh, splitting up the random variable and the number. So forget about the probability and the k, just look at the inner stuff in inside bracket. Okay. Well what we notice we see that there's an x3 on the right hand side, there's an x3 on the left hand side. And since we want to take all the um the random variables, group them together, that tells us we we might first take this x3 squared and take it to that right hand side rather than take this 20x3 squared to the other side because otherwise we'll get minus numbers and we don't have result for mi with uh, minuses, sum of squared with minuses in them. Uh, Okay, so take this x3 to the other side, so we have x2 squared plus x4 squared is bigger than 19x1 squared plus 20x3 squared minus x3 squared, so that's also 19x3 squared. So there's a common factor of 19 here. Now, there's two things you might try here. One, you might say, well, look, since all the terms are x squared, sum of squared normals, we've seen before that the sum of squared normals is chi-square. So you might think, oh, let's take this over and take that over as well. But that, you'll find, will, won't will work because we're going to have minus numbers, as I said before. So that says suggests another thing. We also know the result that if you take, the, this is of 
the sub b might be involved some kind of chi-square. This is also some kind of chi-square. So if we have a ratio of two chi-squares divided by respective degree of freedom, we know that's an f. So that suggests that we can try another thing. Divide both sides by through by this. Okay, uh, We could do that if we're not dividing by zero. Well, anything squared is non-negative. And the chance that this sum of these two is zero will be zero since x is normal, so it's continuous. And we know that the probability that a random variable that is continuous equaling a particular value is zero. So we divide through by, since this is not going to be zero, we can divide through. So we have, therefore, x2 squared plus x4 squared. x4 squared, come on, pen. x4 squared over 19, common factor, so it's x1 squared plus x3 squared, bigger than 1. What's that doing there? Right, so now it is of the form a random variable on the left hand side because all that's a random variable and that's a number. That means the original problem is the same as saying this solving this for k. So like this whole fraction here is like our new random variable y. I'm going to find out the distribution of this y. Now the top bit here, each of these x's is normally distributed with a mean of 0 and a variance of 4. So if we standardize it, I'm standardizing it because I can see these are normal squared and added together. So that points to a chi-square. I'm heading towards a chi-square 2. I know that. So by standardizing it, I subtract the mean of 0 divided by its standard deviation, which is 2, and I square it. But so as not to change it from x2 squared, I have to multiply it by 4. Likewise, for the second term in the numerator, x4 squared times 4. So now this whole top numerator is the same as x2 squared plus x4 squared. But we can see now it's going to be 4 times a chi-square 2. The bottom bit, similar thing going on here, so it'll be x1 over 2 all squared plus x 3 squared and since I've just changed the bottom there I should balance it by multiplying through by 4 for the same reason as I did on the top there well you can see then the top and bottom both contain value 4 so the 4's actually cancel In other words, what we have on the top is we have a chi-square 2 and the bottom bit, 1 over 19 there, and this bit here is also chi-square 2. Moreover, these two chi-squares are independent of each other because like the x's involved in the numerator are not the same as the x's involved in the denominator so they're independent okay so we know that we're getting closer to an f here if we divide the chi-square in the numerator by its degree of freedom we divide by 2 okay since I divide by 2 I can't just divide what I like and or multiply by what I like I have to balance it out so if I divide by 2 
so as not to change anything from before we have to multiply by 2 same as with the bottom I divide by 2 I have to multiply by 2 but now what you can see is that this in the middle here is an F distribution with degree of freedom 2 2 2 and 2 cancels so in other words that this is equal to 19 times a random variable which is F degree of freedom 2 2 so we substitute this back into here for y y bigger than 1 so we have this 19 times a f distribution bigger than 1 19 is a constant take it up to the other side so we want to find the probability that this f distribution bigger than 19 is equal to k so if you trace yourself go back right to the start of the video you'd have seen that I said the standard problems was here that is my y bigger than a number equals to the probability and since it's f it looks something like this positive skewed and 19 is the point we want and k is the value we want to look up but now we know which table we want we want the f table and if you look up on f table degree of freedom 2 in the numerator 2 in the denominator you'll find that k is not 0.25 so well done if you followed that to recap uh, the problems the standard problems are of the form probability at y is bigger than or less than a number equals the probability in this case we don't have the standard form because we've got random variables on the left and right hand side of inequality so we had to just ex uh, experiment a little bit and we come to um, we come to this ratio here which turn is, which involves sum of squared of normals on the top sum of squares of normals on the bottom which suggesting chi square on the top chi square on the bottom uh, that suggests also an f cause ratio of two chi squares divided by the respective degree of freedom and the method we used to get it to a ratio of two chi squares divided by the respective degree of freedom and those chi squares independent is we just use the method of if you multiply the if you divide a uh, something by a number you multiply by that number as well so that it balances out and that's all I've done throughout okay so um, well done and we're done